Sorry for the delay. I had trouble getting things started this morning. Um, welcome to morning prayer from All Saints Church, a Lutheran Episcopal community in Washington Courthouse, Ohio, and St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Hillsboro, Ohio, for the commemoration of John Raleigh Mott, um, evangelist and ecumenical pioneer. A dedicated missionary for the worldwide spread of the gospel, John Raleigh Mott connected ecumenism and evangelism as related tasks for modern Christianity. John Mott was born in Livingston Manor, New York, on May 25, 1865, and moved with family to Iowa in September of that same year. After graduating from Cornell University in 1888, Mott became student secretary of the International Committee of the YMCA and chairman of the executive committee of the student volunteer movement. In 1895, he became general Secret secretary of the World Student Christian Federation. And in 1901, he was appointed the assistant general secretary of the YMCA. During World War I, President Woodrow Wilson appointed him to the no National War Work Council for which he received the Distinguished Service Medal. His ecumenical work was rooted in the missionary slogan, The Evangelization of the World in This Generation. Convinced of the need for better cooperation among Christian communions in the global mission field, he served as chairman of the committee that organized the International Missionary Conference in Edinburgh in 1910, over which he also presided. Gen uh, considered to be the broadest gathering of Christians up to that point, the conference marked the beginning of the modern ecumenical movement. Speaking before that conference, Mott summed up his view of Christian missions. It is a starting and startling and solemnizing fact that even as late as the 20th century, the great command of Jesus Christ to carry the gospel to all mankind is still so largely unfulfilled. The Church is confronted today, as in no preceding generation, with a literally worldwide opportunity to make Christ known. Mott continued his involvement in the developing ecumenical movement, participating in the Faith Order Conference at Lausanne um, in 1927, and was Vice President of the Second World Conference of, on Faith and Order in Edinburgh in 1937. He also served as chairman of the Life and Work Conference in Oxford, also held in 1937. In 1946, he received the Nobel Peace Prize for his work in establishing and strengthening international organizations which worked for peace. The World Council of Churches, the founding of which was largely driven by Mott's efforts, elected him its lifelong honorary president in 1948. Although Mott was a Methodist, the Episcopal Church recognized his work by making him an honorary canon of the National Cathedral. Mott died in 1955. So that's John Raleigh Mott. Let us prepare for worship. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 97. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the peoples see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. 
Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments, O Lord, for you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above the go all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of the saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for, for the righteous, and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. One thing that's um, interesting about this psalm is it points to a time in early Judaism that was not monotheistic. Meaning that the Jewish people uh, were called to worship only one God. But that didn't mean that they necessarily believed that other gods didn't exist. Um, now, they did believe that carved images were not gods, um, idols are not gods, and that there are lots of false gods out there. But, um, they also, um, pointed to the possibility of other gods existing, just not as powerful. Um, you know, bow down before him, all you gods. Now that's right after those uh, confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. But then that next statement of bow down before him, all you gods, um, carved images and false gods can't bow down before God. So who are these all you gods? Um, then for the, for you, O Lord, most are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Um, these aren't words about, none of these other gods actually existing. Just about being supreme. Now, interestingly, um, gods at this time tended to be national gods, and each nation believed that their god was supreme. And this was proved or disproved by um, results of war. So if you won a war, it's proof that your god is more powerful than the god of the people that you were fighting. Um, they all carried their gods with them into battle. It wasn't just Israel that carried the Ark of the Covenant and, and believed that, that God was destining them and destining them and helping them to be victorious. Something we often forget in our modern understanding of there being only one God. The God of Abraham did not come out of a monotheistic world. It came out of a polytheistic with this is our God and our God is the best. Um, a reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how, please, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife and his interests are divided. And the unmarried woman and the virgin are anxious about the affairs of the Lord, so that they may be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. 
If anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly towards his fiancée, if his passions are strong, and so it has to be, let him marry as he wishes. It is no sin. Let them marry. But if someone stands firm in his resolve, being under no necess necessity but having his own desire under control, and has determined his own, in his own mind to keep her as his fiancée, he will do well. So then, he who marries his fiancée does well, and he who refrains from marriage will do better. A wife is bound as long as her husband lives, but if the husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, only in the Lord. But in my judgment, she is more blessed if she remains as she is, and I think that I too have the Spirit of God. Here ends the reading. Um, Paul's, all of Paul's stuff about being celibate and the reasons for it. I mean, they've, they've led to this understanding within um, Catholicism that clergy cannot and should not be married. Um, they've led to some really weird um, things about celibacy being holy, though Paul also says that marriage is holy. Um, this all comes out of Paul's understanding that the second coming of Jesus Christ was going to be in his lifetime. And about being ready for that, being able to be focused on that future and on God in that way. It all falls apart when you take that away and you say, well, the second coming is sometime in the distant future not during your lifetime, Paul. In which case, all of his reasons, or the majority of his reasons for celibacy, are moot. They don't mean anything. Um, he... His, his, um, and it's also interesting here that, that he talks about, um, about that setting aside those desires as being, um, better, not one good and one bad, but just better. And, and that also is all about that, being able to devote yourself fully to God. Um, that, uh, and, and how, if, if we are married, that devotion is divided, which actually points to something that Paul, um, that, that's also often missed that Paul sees the commitment of marriage as being equivalent or greater than the commitment to God. Um, so this is a major commitment that is to take all of our attention. That's pretty powerful. I mean, he sees that as as part of faith, is that if you are going to commit to marriage, you need to do it fully. That your primary goal as a husband is to please your wife, and your primary goal as a wife is to please your husband. And it goes both ways. It's not one or the other. It's both. Just some interesting things to think about in that. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Everlasting God, who leads your people's feet into the ways of peace, raise up heralds and evangelists of your kingdom, like your servant John Mott, that your church may make known to all the world the unsearchable riches and unsurpassed peace of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom you and the Holy Spirit, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you and I will see you online tomorrow morning. This has been Morning Prayer for the commemoration of John Raleigh Mott, um, evangelist and ecumenical pioneer from All Saints Church, a Lutheran Episcopal community in Washington Courthouse, Ohio, and St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Hillsboro, Ohio. Thank you for joining us.